Hello and welcome to Hidden Video Game Details, the series that aims to show you the things that you may have missed in your favourite games and that I think are really cool. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy these videos and without further delay, let's get started. So stacking is a game all about wooden dolls, though these dolls are alive. You can gain special abilities depending on which doll you are currently inside of, and one of the more interesting dolls that you can assume control of is a bear. Well, if you use the bear's growl ability, you will see just how scary the bear can be. So given that the dolls are wooden, when they're frightened, instead of pooing their pants, they instead drop little piles of sawdust, which is very funny. Now, the various ways that games try to keep you on track can be pretty creative. I mean, it was only recently that we discovered the never-ending train in Hitman Absolution. Well, high-speed cycling game Descenders has a more straightforward way to make sure players don't stray too far. <laughs> So reaching the edge of the map will cause your character to be cannoned back to the playable area. I mean, give me this over boring old invisible walls any day of the week. Speaking of ways to prevent players going where they shouldn't, let's take a look at Dredge. Now on the surface of things, pun intended, Dredge is a simple fishing game where you head out, catch fish, sell them for money, and then upgrade your boat. The thing is, fishing at night reveals something sinister is afoot and things get progressively stranger from there. Now, if the waters of Dredge are just too much for you to bear, you can make a break for it and try to leave the area. And on the way, you may even encounter beautiful scenes like this. However, not all of the sea creatures are as friendly. So traveling too far will see your ship swallowed whole. Again, give me this sort of thing over invisible walls any day of the week. Now, BeamNG is a game that encourages you to experiment with its various settings and scenarios. I mean, how many other driving games can you toggle what kind of gravity you want to drive under at the press of a button? The thing with experiments is that by their very nature, you're not always sure how things are going to turn out. Take this car for example. This beast of a machine reaches speeds in the hundreds of miles per hour in mere seconds. The thing is, the longer you drive, the weirder things get, and after a while, the tyres of the car will start to look like this. Still, you can continue to keep your foot on the accelerator, with speeds in the tens of thousands being pretty easy to achieve. However, as you continue to defy the laws of physics, your speedometer will change from MPH to simply brr, as in a reference to the money printer goes brr meme. It's brilliant. So considering how much I love the Metal Gear Solid series, I cannot believe I haven't covered this next detail before. In Metal Gear Solid 3, there are tons of cutscenes, and one of these cutscenes shows the end being wheeled out of a warehouse in preparation for a battle with Snake. Don't be fooled by the end's old age, he is still a feared marksman. Now what's cool is, if you've picked up the sniper rifle and are quick enough, you can do this as soon as the cutscene ends. End. So you can kill the end before you fight him, skipping his boss fight entirely. Well, almost entirely, that fight is replaced with a fight against the Ocelot unit. In typical Metal Gear Solid fashion, killing the end also rewards Snake with a wheel to the face, which is admittedly very funny. Oh, and something else that I noticed while playing through MGS3 again is the power of Snake's handkerchief. When in the lab, Snake can use the scientist disguise and walk around with a chloroformed handkerchief. One wave of the rag is enough to put an enemy to sleep, but be careful. If you wave it around in front of Snake, he can also fall asleep. Ugh. 
So recently, the Saboteur was added to Steam, along with a whole bunch of other EA games. For those of you who don't know, the Saboteur is an action-adventure game developed in 2010 by Pandemic Studios. You play as Sean Devlin, who must liberate Nazi-controlled Paris, slowly restoring colour to the city of love with each area you free. Now, despite the game's serious subject matter, there is still time for some good old-fashioned video game nudity. But for the more sensitive among you, there is an option to toggle this off in the menus. Though if you do, Sean won't be best pleased. Oh, that's more like it. Come on, you can always go to the confession when you're done playing. Right, now we're in business. Put the kiddies to bed already. So a recurring joke in the Family Guy series is the evil monkey. This mysterious creature haunts Chris Griffin by hiding in his closet. And whenever Chris tells someone about the monkey, it hides. Well, in the first level of the Family Guy PS2 game, we can enter Chris's room. And for some reason, he's staring nervously at his closet, though nothing seems to be there. The thing is, the evil monkey will only appear if no one else is looking. So if you turn Stewie away from the closet, this will happen. <laughs> Permission to freak out! Oh no, someone peed in my pants! So it turns out that Chris was right to be afraid, as there really is an evil monkey hiding in his closet. This is one of the reasons I miss licensed games. The opportunity to incorporate cool jokes from the source material is almost limitless. So for this next detail, I could be talking complete nonsense. I mean, I'm not a gun expert, but I think what I'm saying is right, which makes this detail very cool. The Finals is a first-person shooter developed by Embark Studios that released late last year. Focusing more on team-based action, the Finals has potential, but whether it can survive in an already crowded FPS market remains to be seen. Anyway, it's now time for me to talk about guns, which usually never goes well. So here I shoot four shots with the revolver and reload. So far, so normal. Well, if we take a closer look at the reload, we can see that the primers on four of the bullets have been dented, meaning that those were the four that were fired. Here, I just fire one shot and only one of the primers is hit. Now, like I said, I'm not a gun expert, but even I'm impressed by this level of detail. Oh, and if what I've just said makes no sense, please make sense of it in the comments. Right, let's end today's video with the excellent Left 4 Dead 2. Now, at the beginning of the main campaign, the survivors have little to no understanding of what's going on, and this is reflected in their voice lines. During the first campaign, whenever the group encounter a special infected, they won't know what to call them. For example, here is what they call a spitter. Green thing! Green thing! Here is what they call a boomer. Here is what they call a charger. And here is what they call a jockey. However, later on in the group's journey, they will start to call the special infected by their names. Jockey! Holy shit, that thing's riding him! Charger! Charger! I love details like this. It's the subtle kind of world building that goes a long way. So that's it. If you know of any cool things in games that you think I should check out, then please leave them down below. Big or small, obvious or not obvious, if I think it's cool, I'll include it in a video. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll speak to you all soon.